My man Alvin Leonardo gave me a challenge build to build a character that specializes in poisons and acids. I decided to go straight poisons. I think doing an acid build is quite a bit easier than doing a poison build, so I wanted to take the harder of the two and to do a unique build around it, and I think I came up with something that is pretty cool that you're going to probably be pretty happy about. You can almost look at this video as a progression of the UNT deep dive. I didn't really talk much about how you can use UNT's animal friendship with snakes to your advantage and this build really goes into that a lot. So yeah, this is the development of that UNT video. So to begin the build, we are taking UNT. We're going plus one, plus one, plus one, 16 in con, dex, and wisdom and dropping the rest right off the gate. If you can even convince your DM to let you start out with a giant poisonous snake, do so. If not, then you're going to want to use your downtime to look for a giant poisonous snake. They're in a whole bunch of different biomes, so there's a good chance you're going to be able to find it and keep pushing until you do find it. As soon as you do find it, you can cast Animal Friendship on it. If it succeeds, cast it again. If it succeeds, cast it again. And it lasts 24 hours, concentration list. Before going to bed every night, recast it on all your snakes if you have more than one and then in the morning cast it on all your snakes if you have more than one which also incentivizes us to have a way to travel these snakes around so we might just literally have a snake cart and let them hunt at night or something they'll figure it out but anyways that's that's part of this build is having an animal friendship with at least one giant poisonous snake all right moving into the actual build at level one we're going to pick up ranger we're going to be using all the variant features i'm going to be taking proficiency and expertise in nature pretty unusual to take expertise in nature if you didn't know when you're harvesting venom nature is the skill you use it's going to be a dc 20 to harvest and if you get less than five you're going to take the poison damage you were trying to harvest so if you get 14 or lower now we have resistance to poison damage and we're going to have expertise in nature so we have a good chance of being really really good at harvesting this venom which is going to be a big part of this build at level two we're picking up hunter's mark we're picking up entangle and we're picking up archery fighting style hunter's mark is going to be pretty core to what we're trying to do here Everything about this build is very ranger-esque in that it's trying to do a little bit of damage multiple times stacked on top of each other, a, a whole bunch of little instances of damage until it becomes a lot of damage. And the Hunter's Mark is definitely a big part of that. Entangle, of course, is just a fight winning spell. Having 16 in Wisdom gives us a pretty decent entangle throughout our career. So just being able to control certain battles for especially swarm battles is just going to be really nice archery fighting style of course is just amazing i'm also going to pick up good berry good berry is just efficient healing it's efficient to use your spell slots at the end of the day if you're in the position to do so overall just a just a good spell at level three we're taking hunter and i know that a lot of you are going to say well you would be better off to do a different subclass and you're probably right we know hunter is underpowered however hunter does have a niche every single ranger subclass gives you a way to to do bonus damage but hunters does a d8 which is unusual and it does a non-bonus action d8 which is unheard of it's the only build that does a non-bonus action d8 so it's has some of the best efficiency for damage so long as we hit someone who's already taking damage now at level four we're going to take the poisoner feet you know i'm not going to do a poison build without taking the poisoner feet now we ignore resistance to poison damage which sounds pretty cool but honestly it's not that great most creatures who have any sort of resistance to poison actually have immunity to poison dwarves aren't going to like our poison, but that's a big majority of what it's going to be. What we really get out of it is bonus action, throw a poison on our weapon, and it gives us a new type of poison. That new type of poison is pretty good if we're being pressured. So if someone gets up close to us and we can't really attack them at range, we can now whip out our rapier or whatever weapon we're using, coat it in poison and hit them, and there's a, a half decent chance that they're going to be poisoned, which is going to help you defensively since they're pressuring you. But it's also nice if we have a bunch of interesting poisons that we don't necessarily want just sitting on an arrow. We can whip out when the time calls for it like a carry-on crawler for example is kind of like a whole person type vibe and so if we can set that up you can whip it out as a bonus action and use it and that's really what we're getting out of the poisoner feet now the dc isn't super high but you know there is a chance especially for hitting multiple enemies which we'll jump into in a minute this is a good time to also talk about our serpent venom serpent venom is a as written poison and how it works is you put it on one piece of ammunition or on a weapon and it lasts until you do damage then it has a really low con save they're probably going to succeed but it does half damage even if they do we're going to do half of 3d6 damage whenever we do hit with something that has serpent venom on it but the nicest part is that it lasts until we use it so we can dip our arrows in it specific arrows and we just keep track of how many poisoned arrows we have and we can choose to use those poisoned arrows and that's a really good fun use case for serpent venom that we can take advantage of way more than most people can one thing to mention about serpent venom is it sells for a lot base it's 200 gold per dose and we can get a ton of doses presumably 
by having a bunch of these serpents. So be very careful. You don't want to break the economy too much, and your DM's probably going to start letting bandits have serpent venom against you if you flooded the market with it. But maybe if you be very clever about how you sell it, like maybe you have a, a contract with the state, so it's still managed and you're only selling it to the proper authorities. If you do it right, your DM might reward it and you might get some good money out of it. But overall, I'm taking it to use myself. I just think it's cool to put that extra 3d6, probably halved on every single one of our arrows that we choose to use. So now let's break it down a little bit. We hit them with a bow. We do bow damage. Then we do hunter's mark damage. Then we do colossus slayer damage. Then we do venom damage. So now you see where, where we're coming from, where we're just trying to do a bunch of little instances of damage over and over again until it's a lot of damage. So we're good at single target enemies. But at this point, we're really lean, leaning into entangle to cover our weakness against swarms. At level five, we're getting extra attack. Of course, that's just good. If we haven't gotten our poisonous snake at this level, we can take locate animal or plants. So within a five mile radius, we can cast the spell and locate the closest venomous snake to us go to it charm it rinse and repeat until you have enough snakes that you're happy otherwise you can just take like summon beast and summon a snake as your beast and have you know that's a solid option as well which will continue the theme of just extra attacks interestingly cordon of arrows works with poisoned ammunition so it makes cordon of arrows more interesting but i still don't think it's a very good spell it's there and it is better than normal, so you might take it for that reason alone. At level six, we get more movement speed and climbing and swimming speed, pretty simple. At level seven, I personally take multi-attack defense. There's just so many people with multi-attack and a plus four to AC is a lot. So that's pretty good defense. Escape the Horde is pretty good with an archer as well. So we can kind of disengage better. At level nine, Conjure Barrage here is actually really interesting. So Conjure Barrage, you pick up a single piece of ammunition and then you duplicate it. And as I read it, if you have poisoned ammunition, it's duplicated. So you can have this one special arrow that you put every single one of your poisons on. And then when it comes time to use it, you can bonus action, put your poisoner feet poison on it, let it go and then blast a cone area. And it's going to do the arrows damage, but then duplicate the poison to do the poison to everybody in there. And actually makes Conjure Barrage viable. Considering it's not a very viable spell beforehand, I would absolutely allow this as a DM because it's creative, seems like it's as written, and you know what? You're making use out of a very unused spell, so that's always a bonus. Since we're a build spec for single target damage, this is going to be a really nice boon for us to take care of hordes. At level 10, we get Nature's Veil, which just is an awesome feature, letting us escape situations or get advantage in, in, in spots. It's just really, really good. At level 11, we get Volley, which can help us against Swarm. Not going to be used often, but if enough people gather up, you can get a lot of attacks off on one round on each of them. So what I like about this build is we're a poison build, which is unusual. We're a hunter build, which is unusual, and it makes it pretty dang viable, which I really, really like. And we're also doing a unique feature from UMT and taking advantage of something that would probably often be overlooked. So we're hitting a lot of notes with this character that it's doing a lot of things that people don't think can be done. And I really like that. I would role play this as a Yuan T who is pretty obsessed with poisons. They find them beautiful and they want to create the most deadly of deadly poisons. That's their lifelong dream. Because of this, they have an aversion to any creature that's immune to poison. We can't get around that poison immunity. That'll always be a weakness of this build. So I'm going to role play into it. Anything like elementals or undead, anything that can just shrug off deadly poisons is going to be unnatural to this UMT. They shouldn't exist. Nothing should exist that doesn't take damage from poisons. That's just unnatural. So I'd almost take like an Oath of the Watchers type vibe here, where if there's something in this world that is immune to poison, it shouldn't exist. And that's this UMT's perspective. I'm going to have fun with that roleplay. So this serpent poison that we're going to have through most of the game is about 5.5 damage on a hit on average, because I'm expecting them to save. Now your DM is going to be very different about how many doses of venom one snake can give you. Now, it wouldn't make sense for one dose, because in my head, it's like the snake, you can fight these venomous snakes. And if you fight them, it's not like if they attack you, they run out of venom. They can attack multiple times with this venom. But in the real world, if you drain a snake of its venom, it can be a week before it has all of its venom back. You kind of have to balance it. You know, it's it's going to be more based on the game balance. But I think a couple doses every day, maybe one D4 minus one doses a day, and then it needs to get a long rest before you can reattempt it is pretty reasonable. And then just, you know, if they have a whole bunch of snakes, you're going to have to manage how they use it. And then there's the economy. So this is a little bit high maintenance for DMs. So use this with prudence. Don't be a dick. Don't try and break the game. Try and keep it reasonable and have one or two snakes.
snakes and, and be smart about it. A big part of this character is that it's a hunter, but instead of hunting creatures, it's hunting poisons. And it specifically wants to locate creatures with deadly poisons and capture them, strain them, and create situations where it can harvest the venom over and over. But it would love to capture carrion crawlers. It would love to capture wyverns. It would even love to capture a purple worm if it could somehow figure out how to do that. And that would be really this character's overall motivation is it's trying to create the deadliest poison in the world, something that just annihilates anything. I love any time that a character is really interacting with the world and trying to manipulate it to its advantage. Some DMs don't love that, but I actually think it's a really special thing about D&D. Like if we wanted to play a game with limited access to the world, we'd play a video game. But D&D, you can actually manipulate the world to your advantage, just like we do in the real world. And I think that's really cool. And something I want to reward players for doing if they're being very intelligent about it. That's just me though. Not every DM is going to love what this character brings to the table though. So maybe check in with them before using this at your own table. And I think I will leave it at this character is very DM dependent. Your DM might say you can only get one serpent venom dose a week. And if that's the case, you're either going to need to manage a lot of serpents, which they're probably not going to like, or this build just won't be viable. So keep that in mind. Work with your DM very closely for this one. But everything I've talked about is definitely as written. If that matters to your DM, I guess let them know. I really like this build. Hope you guys did as well. Let me know what you would do to make it more interesting or more flavorful, more colorful. Let me know in the comments down below. But other than that, have yourselves a lovely day and I'll see you on the next one. Later.